Good morning, good morning, good morning. What another blessed opportunity we have to come and to serve the Almighty God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we're grateful. We're thankful, God. We're honored that you've given us another day to be a part of the, the living, God, with purpose in mind. God, you know every heart and every heart's desire. I pray that you touch him this morning in a special way, God, for you know. And because you know, God, you know what we are going through. You know, God, what we've been through. But, God, you also know what we're going to go through. And because of that, God, we come this morning trusting you, relying on you, depending on you to work everything out for our good. So we honor you today, we praise you, and we lift you up. For it is in the powerful, in the penetrating name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray, we believe, we declare, and we decree, and we call it done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today we want to look at a scripture that's familiar probably to most that you've heard before, but just want to talk about it for just a few moments. And this scripture, uh, passage of scripture, comes from the book of Psalms, Psalms rather, and it's Psalm uh, 51. Psalm 51 says in verse uh, number 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Just want to share with you a thought. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. We know that the enemy is always making efforts to try to get to uh, our lifeline. and We recognize that our lifeline is our heart because the Bible teaches us in Proverbs 4 and 23, it teaches us to guard our hearts diligently. For out of it flows the issues of life. Out of our heart comes who we are, our character. Out of our heart comes from what we do, what we say. So it's telling us to guard our heart. David was caught in a situation where he let his guards down. And, you know, sometimes we can let our guards down. And as we let our guards down, the enemy seeks out a way to get into us, to uh, cause us because we're not sometimes aware of all the consequences, but will cause us and we will actually be caught up in the negativity or the negative ways of doing things. But we come this morning believing and trusting in God knowing that he's already worked everything out for our good. And because he's worked it out for our good and for his glory, we just acknowledge. Look, David's situation was this, that he messed up. And who hasn't messed up? That he had a heart of God, in which we know that he had a heart after God. But yet he allows circumstances and situations to get in the way of the clear consciousness of what his effort should have been. We know the story with David and Bathsheba. We know the story how he looked. We know the story of how he had lust. And we know the story that because of his power and his authority, he was able to do something about his situation. We know that when we sin in life, not only do our sin affect those who we're directly in relationship with, but it can affect others. This sin, what David did, as the Bible teaches us, it affected not only David and Uriah, excuse me, David and Bathsheba, but Uriah, her husband an unborn child who would die. And then it goes on and on. But today, what I want to encourage you to do is to make sure that while the enemy is trying to come near us and while the enemy is trying to take us out, we need to guard our heart. Guard our hearts from the evils of this world. Guard our hearts from evil thoughts. Guard our hearts from the feeling and the desires of doing things as the world may do it. And as we guard our hearts this morning, we want to make sure that we ask God, and we know that if we've done something that's been against God's will, we know that if we uh, had sin, and we sometimes may say hidden sin, those are things that we think that nobody knows. David thought that what he did, nobody would ever find out. But the Bible tells us that the prophet Nathan brought it to his attention. This morning, even with us, there may be things that we've said and we've done that's been against the will of God, because at the bottom line is, even though we do things against people, we actually sin against God. Our sin is against God and a rebellion against him. And that's why it's important that David recognized this morning that he wanted God to create in him. And to create in him is to bring into existence, to bring into existence that which needs to be in order for you and for me to continue to function in the will of God. David's acknowledgement, David's expression to God was in my heart because out of my heart that flows who I am. And as we look this morning, as we get and as we see the love of God, as we see the mercy of God that was shown to David even through this psalm, as we see David, how he's pleased to God, as he, he recognizes that I don't want to be like I, I appear to be. I want to be God as you would have me to be. 
And as we look at this and as we recognize this today, that as we seek God in the midst of everything that we're going through, and as we seek God when we've made a mistake, you need to know and I need to know and we all need to recognize that God forgives us. There's no sin. There's nothing we can do that God will not forgive. But do understand this. Even in the midst of forgiveness, there are consequences that may go along with what we've done. But what we have to know is that God, in the midst of our consequences that may happen, he's a very present help, and he will strengthen us. He will direct us. He will guide us. And I want to encourage you right now that we need to be concerned about what matters most. And what matters most in life are the issues of life. It's love. It's relationship. It's those things that are the heart of God. It's those things that allows us to be in relationship with God. Remember, God wants for us to be in relationship with him. And as we're in relationship with him, as we must know, we need to get it right. What is it that I'm saying, get it right? Get it right so that our relationship with God will be one that we as believers can be open with him. See, what sin wants to do, sin wants to block out. Sin wants to keep you from being connected with God. Sin is almost like a roadblock that's trying to keep you from getting to where God wants you to go. But I encourage you right now that as we seek God's presence, as we seek God's face, as David did, as David was seeking and, 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 and wanting God to, to take it all out, to take the negative out, because, God, I know I need your presence. Somebody this morning needs to know that, God, we need your presence. And, God, we thank you for your presence because you said in your word where two or three are gathered together in your name that you would be in the midst. So, God, I thank you right now that we can look toward the hills with cometh our help and strength and know that it all comes from you. I thank you this morning, God, that we're guarding our heart. Help us now, God to not allow the things of the world, the, the things that we see, Heavenly Father God, the things that people say to get into our hearts and to cause us to, to think negatively and to do negatively. We are, as believers, we're set up with a different standard. We know that Jesus died. We know that Jesus got up on the third morning. We know that because he has arisen, that all power in his hands. We know this morning that as we guard our hearts from, from the things of this world, we don't have to be alone. So I pray this morning that each of you, as you continue to recognize God's presence, as you continue to know that God will forgive us of all of our sins, and as you continue to know that we can allow what affects the world to affect us in a way that it causes us to be in opposition to what God's will and his way is, as we love God, as he promises us his presence, as we recognize that maybe, not maybe, but consequences comes from our, our sin and against God. But we also know that our love, his love for us, it never fails. We serve an all-knowing and an all-caring God. We serve God, a God who will show us. And in the midst of showing us our error, he will also bless us through it. Somebody this day needs to know that there's nothing that's too hard for God. Somebody this morning needs to know that God loves you. He loves you right where you are this morning. He loves you because he, has, he knows everything about you. Just know this, as we are believing God and as we're trusting God, there is no greater love that can come than that from the love of God. And know this, that no weapon that will be formed against you shall prosper. Know this, that the enemy is trying to fool us trying to convince us, trying to make us have a spirit of fear. But the Bible says, God, not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So I encourage you today to guard your heart. Be on high alert for the attacks of the enemy. Be on high alert for people trying to come into your lives who are trying to disrupt and cause confusion. And know this, that God loves you. And because he loves you, he forgives you. Remember, today to guard your heart. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you now that we're guarding our hearts, that we're making sure that the things that we come in contact with, that we're making every effort to make sure that it honors you. Bless your children today. Let them know that all is well. Let them know, God, that the words that you'll never leave nor forsake. So, God, please, and we pray now that the, the hearts of your people are guarded by your words. 
We magnify you, we glorify you, and we lift you up. For it is in the powerful and the penetrating name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray, we believe, we declare, and we decree, and we call it done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.